Do you ever feel like you're wasting time and aren't really enjoying your life to the fullest? You see the people around you achieving great things and crushing every goal they set out for themselves, but you're nowhere near where you want to be. Well, we got you covered. In today's video, we're going over the 10 habits that will increase your happiness. Make sure to stay tuned until the end if you want to learn about the most important habit and what we often call the golden rule of life. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell icon. Let's dive in. Habit 1. Confront your stress. Stress can be termed as one of the biggest causes of depression and sadness. We're so often confronted with difficulties that impact our mental and physical health. Physical separation, for example, can make us feel left out and lonely, as well as raise stress and worry. If we encounter high stress levels for a longer period of time, our immune system will become weaker, leading to multiple types of disease. People may have intense and long-lasting reactions following a traumatic occurrence. Learning to adopt good coping mechanisms and receiving appropriate treatment and support can help to get rid of stressful feelings and symptoms. Experiencing something traumatic like an accident, a family fight, pricking off a relationship, or losing a friend can clearly lead to suffering, and even though it may seem like a tough cookie, Confronting your fears and stressful situations can and will really help you in the long run. Instead of walking the other way, stay as you are and accept that some things make you feel uncomfortable and upset. Once you face them, they won't be able to hurt you anymore. We always recommend meditation, working out, and eating healthy as some of the best ways to cope with stress. Meditation will give you mental peace. Whenever something tough comes your way, You'll be able to deal with it as you focus on your breathing and positive thoughts. Working out is a commonly used outlet and can give you a dopamine high and adrenaline rush to deal with stress. Finally, eating healthy provides you with a vitamin and hormone balance. It's very important to make sure that your body is fed with healthy foods. How do you expect your brain to be healthy while living in an unhealthy body? Habit 2. Live in the moment. The ability to recognize, understand, and amplify the positive aspects of our lives is termed as savoring. It also involves the ability to cope with terrible situations while enjoying the positive ones. We too often get distracted by worrying about past situations as well as future outcomes. This leads to a situation in which you're never ever really enjoying the present. While you're thinking about how you should have acted in historical event, you're losing time to work on your future and making sure to improve every single day. While worrying about your future, you forget that your future won't ever happen if you don't invest the necessary time and effort right now. All energy wasted on contemplating different outcomes is time wasted that you could have used to work on your goals. While coping tactics for difficult situations you faced have been studied for decades, positive psychologists and happiness researchers are now looking into techniques that allow us to stay and thrive in good times. Positive emotions, according to Barbara Fredrickson, PhD, a psychologist at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill, who studies emotions, are more than just happy feelings. Each pleasant emotion, she believes, is a deposit into a positivity savings account. You're working towards a positive future with every small happy thought you foster. Habit 3. Slowing down. Most of us are living past face lives. We're constantly busy thinking about what we have to do next, that we forget to slow down and take some time to ourselves. We find it nearly impossible to take a step back, owing to a societal taboo against doing so. In today's society, the term slowing down usually refers to laziness, slacking, and boredom, but this couldn't be further from the truth. Words like quick and slow have strong implications that reflect societal norms. Consider someone who is quick. He or she is assumed to be able to accomplish more in less time and therefore be more efficient. Many of us have gotten so consumed with not wasting time that we attempt to save every last second of it in order to complete our tasks. We play a game of racing from one task to another to get as much as possible done in the 24 hours we have. Happiness is a state of mind or being, whereas pleasure is a pleasant feeling experienced for a brief period of time. There is nothing wrong with enjoying oneself, and I prefer to do so as often as possible. Happiness, on the other hand, is more about how you experience yourself and the environment in which you live. It also refers to a sense of well-being that extends beyond pleasurable events. Slowing down can assist you in appreciating the small pleasures in life 
and can help you connect on multiple levels of life by putting you in a better state of mind as well as assist you in determining what is and is not significant. Summarized, it makes you appreciate every step of your life way more than would you just jump from one event to another. And heck, we also need to enjoy our lives, not just live them. Habit 4. Declutter To clutter means to stuff something fully, whether it's your mind or your workspace. A cluttered mind cannot think straight and won't be able to reproduce qualitative work. Just like a messy desk will only distract you from focusing on your work. So, if you invest some time into decluttering your mind, you'll be able to better focus on your goals and draw a clear path to get there. The same goes for your working spot. A space that has been decluttered will be brighter, sunnier, and have better airflow. Just imagine your desk full of papers, post-its, reminders, and empty coffee cups. That doesn't sound too nice, does it? Well, that's because it's not. All these different impulses actually distract you from putting in an effective one to two hours of fully focused work a day. You'll literally finish the day with not even half of your tasks done. You may feel like you haven't done anything else but work, but how much has really been ticked off of your list? Apart from that, clutter might have an impact on our anxiety, sleep, and like we said, capacity to concentrate. It can also make us less productive by triggering coping and avoidance tactics that lead us to snacking on junk food and watching useless TV and Netflix. All of this physical, mental, and emotional clutter can make it difficult to think properly, leading to tension and exhaustion. Clutter can make getting things done, finding what you need, and living in an ordered and effective manner difficult. We have clutter for a multitude of reasons. Uncontrollable commercial urges, emotional sentiment, past memories, dread of a future need, guilt or obligation, and hope for a potential change are among the most common. Get rid of this mental and physical clutter and see how it changes your output in terms of mental strength as well as physical work. Habit 5. Kindness to Others It is common knowledge that being kind to others is beneficial. Kindness is a valuable attribute to maintain connections, which aids in the development of a trusting and cooperative community. Scientific studies have determined that showing kindness to others makes someone happier than would they not have helped or been kind. Brian Tui, the lead researcher, was surprised that the association was not stronger, but the findings were still encouraging. He noted that even though on an individual level, the results weren't shockingly high, the overall social effect would be enormous. One step seems to be little effort, but multiplying it by a couple billion leads to a huge change of behavior. So even though you don't feel like you're making a difference, you really are. Showing kindness to people you know, as well as strangers, can make their day. Treat others like you would want to be treated. Habit 6. Forgiveness Forgiveness is one of the most beautiful virtues a person can possess, as it provides peace of mind and makes one feel comfortable and happy. Although it's one of the most difficult things we have to deal with, the impact of applying it literally moves mountains. Always try to understand where the other person is coming from and why they are acting the way they are. Even though their actions can hurt you, holding on to grudges and hard feelings will do more damage in the long run than accepting the situation and coping with its presence. Think of a situation in which you saw a person hurting and compare it to a situation of a person that hurt in the past but decide to forgive. Who looks happier? It's one of the most difficult decisions you'll ever have to make, but it is also one of the most liberating. Consider how much time you spend each day hating someone who has done you wrong. What if you could go back in time and alter your life for the better? It takes time to forgive, but once you do, you've reclaimed a piece of your life. You invest energy into someone or something you don't want to be thinking about, so letting go will give you back that energy as well as turn the hurtful feelings around. We are all aware that life has its ups and downs. Nothing is perfect, so bad things happen. People fight, make mistakes, and say things they later regret. But a grudge has never solved a problem. You may believe you're punishing the other person, but what you're actually doing is punishing yourself. You're carrying a nasty, frustrating burden on your shoulders. The longer you harbor resentment, the more stressful it becomes. The best approach to make yourself happy and content is to forgive the person who has done you wrong and then watch how you change. Take it in. Try to understand what happened 
learn from it, and let it go. Habit 7. Benefit of Doubt Giving someone the benefit of the doubt is the act of accepting something or someone as trustworthy or honest while having reservations. He may be lying, for example, but we must give him the benefit of the doubt and believe what he says for the time being. Instead of anticipating disappointment, give folks the benefit of the doubt. So, if you want to be joyful, trust others as much as you trust yourself. When compared to those who always blamed others, researchers discovered that those who gave others the benefit of the doubt were happier. They invested less time in negative thoughts and judging situations and people without knowing anything about it or them. Until you have more information, you shouldn't make up your mind fully yet. So the next time a buddy cancels plans or fails to respond to a text, give them the benefit of the doubt and wait to hear their side of the story before leaping to conclusions. Assuming that others, especially those we know and love, have good intentions will make the world a better and happier place. Habit 8. Letting go of grudges Closely related to forgiveness, letting go of grudges really deliberates a person. Who hasn't been wounded by someone else's acts or words? Whether it's your ex-lover who cheated on you or a co-worker that spread a rumor about you, we can always find another reason to be upset at someone. However, grudges aren't worth hanging on to indefinitely. Therefore, it's time to let go of yours if you want to be happy. Think of all the time you spend thinking negative thoughts about someone who upset you. Now, imagine investing that time into working towards your goals and reaching your objectives. How does your life change? And what's the impact on your happiness? Put your ego down. Don't worry about what has happened, but make sure you're so invested in yourself that you don't have time to waste on anyone else's behavior. The only thing you can control is what you do and where you go. Whatever other people do is none of your business. You won't ever be able to change everyone to walk in line with your habits and way of living, so focus on yourself and make sure to always be the type of person you can be proud of. Even if you're the one who has done someone wrong, honestly analyze and admit where it went south. Don't be too tough on yourself. Consider apologizing to folks you've hurt if you're sincerely sorry for something you've said or done. Without making excuses, express your honest sadness or regret and ask for pardon. But keep in mind that you can't make someone forgive you. You can only control how you act, not how they react. Habit 9. Negative Emotions Depending on the situation you've gone through, people may feel more or less. When things don't go as planned, some people will put in that extra time and effort to get it right, where most of us will actually give up and feel depressed. Even though this is the most natural reaction, it's actually the one that blocks you from reaching your objectives the most. Imagine you failed your exam. Instead of studying for the next one, you feel depressed and want to give up, whereas that is actually the exact moment you need to push through and keep going to make sure you don't fail another one. Our reaction towards something that happened unfortunately too often influences our future behavior. It is very important to find a way to cope with negative emotions and learn how to let it rest. At times where you don't feel happy and motivated, fake it until you make it. It may sound a little bit dull, but pretending that you're happy actually manifests happiness into existence. We're not saying you need to fake every single negative emotion you feel, but find a healthy balance between letting negativity out and thinking happy thoughts. Personally, whenever I feel a little bit down, I put on this specific song I love and make myself dance and sing to it. Whichever song gets you going, turn the volume up and let all the negativity out. Find what works for you and make sure you render to it at a time you need it the most. Habit 10. Spend time alone. According to a groundbreaking Harvard study, spending a specific amount of time alone can increase empathy towards others. It seems to be more difficult for us to get perspective and tune into the feelings of others when we are surrounded by large crowds of people. As we discussed decluttering our mind, spending time alone is one of the best ways to do so. When we leave that busy framework, the extra headspace allows us to empathize with the situation of those around us in a more genuine and poignant way. We meet ourselves as we spend time alone. We're not distracted by others in a hundred different impulses we can only turn to ourselves for advice and thoughts. One of the best ways to spend time alone is while traveling. 
When I graduated university, I traveled part of Southeast Asia to not only discover the different cultures, but also to listen to my mind when it was all I had. Even though you get to meet new people, at the end of the night, it's just you and whatever you're experiencing during your travels will make you grow much faster than would you stay at home in your comfortable setting. I'd recommend it to anyone. All right, guys, that's it for today. Thanks for tuning in and don't forget to subscribe. Make sure to check out the video linked on the left if you want to learn more about actual ways to put your words into action.